Hi, good morning. We're entering a new year, 2020. And have you ever wanted to know what God has for you? For this year? For this month? For this week? For today? You can know. You can know what God has for you. And I want to share with you how to find out what God has for you, what His will is for your life. <clears throat> I'm Crystal Roy with the Kingdom Exchange, and let's talk about God. Um, I want to share a Bible verse from Romans 8.14. <clears throat> Actually, a couple of the verses, but let's start with, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Have you ever been known <clears throat> to be led by the Spirit of God? Where do we see the Spirit of God? How can we know what God wants for our lives? We can know by His written word because He has His top 10 commandments, right? Do these things. And with that comes inferring what not to do. And then we have many, many books of the Bible that tell us in the Old and New Testament how we are to live our lives to please God. <clears throat> but when we look at the context of being heirs with Christ for Romans 8.14, the Bible says, For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. And if you're led by the flesh, you're not a son of God. And you may have areas <clears throat> where you need to refine your obedience. So all of you is walking according to the spirit and not according to the flesh. And uh, choices about your body. And choices about your relationships. And choices about your mental and emotional health. What you're putting in for your mind to work with. When the Bible tells us to renew our minds. It, I mean, if you renew something or if you restore something like an old car, <clears throat> you take out all the parts that don't work or are unattractive or are broken and you replace them with new parts. How do you do that? You have to go to the source. You have to go to the place that supplies those parts. And when the Bible says to renew your mind, it's saying to put in the spirit of of God into your spirit through reading God's word because God is a spirit. Now for all who are led by the spirit of God are sons of God. So that means I'm led by love because God who is a spirit is love. So everything I do, everything you do should be based in love. And what is love? You know, man has debated what is love for centuries. And we know a great picture of love is a mother who will get up all night long if needed to change a baby's diaper, to nurse a baby. But what does it mean outside of these things? What does it mean once your children are older? What does it mean at work? What does it mean in your other relationships. What is love? I want to share an experience I had one weekend. This has been 12 or 14 years ago. <clears throat> and I, um, I had a long weekend at work. I was working with an Arabic guy on Friday. On Saturday morning, I had breakfast with a Persian man. On Saturday afternoon, I went to a Russian wedding. And at the Russian wedding, my table mates, when I was seated, um, only I and one other person out of eight were from America and everybody else was from originally from another country. In other words, their heart language was from their other country. I had some, uh, someone from South Africa. I had someone from, uh, Africa, from another part of Africa that was not an uh, English speaker originally. And then uh, I believe there was an Irishman at the table and I can't remember everybody who was there, but I do remember that during the process of the bridal party taking pictures, the rest of the guests went to the reception area 
and we were waiting for that phase of the ceremony and the pictures to be finished. So we sat together and we waited and it took a while. It took like a long while. We were hungry. We were hungry wedding guests. Um, we weren't dancing yet. We were all just seated awkwardly, right? And then seeing the food being brought out and smelling it and seeing how delicious it was. And then soon <clears throat> it was, it was awkwardly displayed and we weren't able to eat yet because the bridal couple wasn't in from the picture taking. So someone went to the microphone while the beautiful video was playing in the background of uh, the, you know, the, the bride and the groom through all their growing years and the person emceed uh, the group. And of course he was talking about congratulations to the bride and groom and uh, gave the story of how they met. And he shared, he asked a question. He asked a question, what is love? And he went, he said, what I'll do is I'll go around to the oldest couples in the room and I will ask what is love? And um, all the oldest couples in the room were Russian because this was a Russian wedding. My friend was Russian, his uh, father was Russian, his mother was Ukrainian, and as the MC <clears throat> went around the room asking the longest married couples, what is love, they all spoke Russian, which was Greek to me. But as I sat there, I said, Lord, what is love? You know, man has debated that for centuries. They've debated, debated the center of man. You know, is it your brain? Is it your belly? Where your spirit is? Where your rivers of living water flow? And as he went around asking that question, I was asking the Lord, what do you think is love? What is love to you? Well, it wasn't immediate, but he did tell me. He told me what love is. The Lord shared with me what his view of love is. And I want to share that with you. Because when the Bible says, for all who are led by the Spirit of God, who is love himself, are sons of God. And you and I want to be sons of God. We don't want to be led of the flesh and for a father to think of us as sons of the devil. We want to be led by God. <clears throat> so here, this is love. Love is discerning a righteous need. For yourself or for another person. First you have to know what, and he put that qualifier, not what is a need. What is a righteous need? What is the righteous need? So love discerns the righteous need. Love develops the ability to fulfill the righteous need. So if you're in a relationship as a husband, a wife, a mother, a father, any other romantic relationship, even a leader a relationship or a follower relationship in business, even just casually, even at the street corner when someone's standing with a sign that says, you know, homeless need money for food and diapers and there's a stroller there. It's covered. You don't know if there's a baby there, but we need to ask the Lord, what is the righteous need? So, <clears throat> love discerns the righteous need. Love develops the ability to fulfill the righteous need. And love delivers the fulfillment of the righteous need. And when you break that down, that's all Jesus. Jesus discerned our righteous need for a Savior. He developed the ability to pay that harsh penalty for sin. And then he delivered. He delivered himself upon a cross and fulfilled the righteous need for a Savior for all time, for time back, for time forward, and for time now. So when you and I are led by love, by the Spirit of God. We are sons of God. So, how will you lead you? How will you lead yourself this day in love? You will discern for yourself your righteous need. We all have <clears throat> the basic needs, food, clothing, and shelter. 
What food? What clothing? What shelter? I want to share an example of hearing from God. Um, I needed a car. Uh, my last son was going to college and I did not want him to be married to a car payment and my car was paid off. <clears throat> so my husband and I talked about it and we agreed to give him my car, but that meant I needed a car. So I said to my husband, um, you know, do you remember Robert Rummage from church? He shared about God speaking to him specifically about a vehicle. And I said, let's try it. And he said, okay. So we sat down together and we asked the Lord, what car do you have for us? <clears throat> now this was brand new and this was in a new marriage. I'm going to say one or two years married. And I I wanted to walk hearing from God. I wanted to be like the Bible says in Romans 8, 14, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. That's my top priority in life. I want to be led by God, and I want to teach others to be led by God. And Jesus said we would be known as his disciples by our love for one another. Love one another, for love is of God. And love then is discerning the righteous need, developing the ability to fulfill the righteous need. So if you have a kid with special needs, you've got to develop the ability to teach them in an effective way, right? And then delivering the fulfillment of that righteous need, which means don't hold back. Don't hold back your skills and talents. Um, not to shame anybody, but I heard someone one time say that if I ever marry again, I'm not going to let my husband know I can cook. That's not love. That's the flesh. We need to avoid that. <clears throat> the only way you can know if you're walking in love or in the flesh is to label it. Right? So, if we're going to show the world that we're Jesus' disciples. It says the world will know. So they will know you are my disciples by your love for one another. That means to be led by the Spirit, to discern, develop, and deliver the righteous need. That's love. But when you're in the flesh and you're in fear, you're in fear for yourself, you will not make decisions out of discerning a righteous need. You'll make wrong decisions. And maybe you've made some wrong decisions this past year, in the last two years, with um, you know our extreme odd environment with the COVID situation. It's, it's really presented a lot of fear. And then there are other things not related to COVID that we can walk in fear. <clears throat> And we don't want to walk in fear. Fear causes us to do very bad things to ourselves and to others. It causes us not to hear from God. It causes us to wrongly divide the word of truth. The Bible says that we should study to show ourselves approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. And you know what? Jesus himself had to grow in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. And if Jesus had to do that, how much more do we have to do that? That we have to grow in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and man. So when we look at that, Jesus is growing in wisdom. So he's getting knowledge and he's applying it through the eyes of love, not the flesh, Wisdom is using knowledge <clears throat> through the eyes of love. So you can know something, but how you apply it can be fleshly, which is not wisdom, or it can be through the eyes of love, uh, uh, applied appropriately. That is wisdom. And we know Solomon was the, what the Bible tells us was the wisest man, <clears throat> and the information he got from God, he was hearing God as he moved along in his life. And one great example of that is when the, the two women brought the baby 
um, to Solomon, and the one woman charged the other woman with stealing her baby. And we found that uh, the one lady said, you know, her baby died in the night, and she stole my baby, and this is my baby. And Solomon had to have heard from God, because this is the information he had, but his solution did not come from anything he had known. So he said, okay, let's cut the baby in half. <gasps> and the real mother said, no, 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 don't do that. Just give her the baby. He used wisdom to hear from God. So <clears throat> just like Jesus grew in wisdom, hearing and applying in God, we can hear information, we can apply it in the flesh, which leads to more flesh. Stature, like physically, my physical body growing taller, and then in favor, relationship with God and man. So let me tell you my story. So my husband and I sat together and we needed a car. And I said, well, you know, let's do what Robert Rummage did and let's hear from God about a car. And he said, okay. So I had my notebook and he had his notebook. He has a notepad, his yellow notepad. And we asked the Lord, to speak to us, to tell us about a car. Now, previously in our marriage, even before we were married, we talked about a car. I still have those original notes from our discussion where we listed this car and that car and even colors. And um, there's an Acadia, I think it is, or Arcadia is a vehicle. And basically, we said, maybe we'll get the Acadia in red. And um, that never happened. We went a new direction. And anyway, here we are needing a car, sitting together, praying to the Lord and asking for him to speak to us about his will for the car. Now, do you think God cares about what you drive? He does. He wants you to have something very functional um, and, you know, whatever suits your needs, you know, lifestyle, all, all everything. God cares about everything. He cares about um, where you live. In fact, the Bible says that God has appointed you to live in a specific place. And he has ordained that for you. And I'm going to challenge you to get there because he's got a great assignment for you from there. But don't run. Don't run. You might not like it at first. And there may be things happening. But I guarantee you, God will move your heart. God will move and change your heart. He will put in you the desires of his heart for your heart so that you can will to do his will. That's what the Bible says. That God lives in us as Christians to will to do his will. And that's what I want to do. I want to surrender to the Lord to do his will for today. And we're coming to the head of the year, January 2022. You can know the will of God for your life. I'm teaching you now how to do that. So my husband and I sat down, we prayed, and I hear something pop in my head, Toy Story, like a cartoon, okay, Toy Story, because I've learned, I've been taught, capture your thoughts, right? Take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. That's Bible, right? So I wrote down Toy Story, and then I heard Van, and I'm like, eh, I don't want a van. I wasn't even a grandma yet, I'm like, I don't want a van. And then I heard license plate. I was like, oh, okay, so what's on the license plate of the Toy Story van? I didn't know. So I looked it up. I Googled it, A113. A cute little story goes with that, that um, the Toy Story developers, designers, Pixar, Pixar is the company, um, that the folks who worked on Toy Story and other movies, Pixar movies, learned their craft in room A113. So in every movie, they honor that by putting it somewhere on a uh, house number or classroom or, in this case, a uh, van license plate. So I was like, oh, so cool. I learned something very sweet and charming about Pixar and those who had studied their craft and were making beautiful kids movies that I also enjoy. And 
I said, oh, okay, but what does A113 mean related to a vehicle? So I Googled A113 vehicle. Wow. <laughs> God was about to surprise me. A113 vehicle is a concept car BMW for $300,000. Well, I knew the $300,000 wasn't my car, but BMW. So I wrote down BMW. And so at this time, I was kind of glancing over to my husband's yellow pad, and he hadn't written anything yet. So I was a little bit concerned. So I was patient, and I waited, and I waited, and I waited, and he still hadn't written anything down. And he's looking like, you know, he's thinking through something. And I said, hey, are you getting anything? He said, hold on a minute. I see it. Oh, I was so excited because I hadn't seen anything. I had heard. I captured my thoughts and I asked the Lord, what does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? And I found out that it pointed to BMW. Well, now was the time for proof, right? Do you remember geometry in school when you had theorems and proofs? I was actually very good at that, ironically. <clears throat> but I asked my husband, what are you seeing? What do you see? He said, hold on, hold on. Okay, so I said, okay. So I waited. And he said, um, it's not really gray or silver, but it, it like reflects the color of the sky. So he said, wait, wait, I'm walking around it. I am walking to the front of it so I can see the emblem on the front. So when he got to the front of the vehicle, as the Lord was showing him, he said, oh, it's a BMW. And he did not know what I'd written on my paper. So I said, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. The Lord has told us both the same thing, but in very, very different ways, right? So the Lord speaks to you in one way and, and maybe your wife or your husband or um, your friend you're partnered with as a prayer partner to, in, in the way that you receive information. Now, I'm also a seer. I see things and then the Lord speaks to me in words. But as we approach 2022 and we want to be led by the Spirit of God, according to Romans 8, 14. We want to be responsible for how we walk into that year. So I want to challenge you to get with God and to ask Him whatever questions that you need. Whatever questions are on your heart, He will answer you. Because the Bible tells us, the, the Word says in the Old Testament, which is also valuable and very important, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and unsearchable things you do not know. So they won't, you know, the answers won't be available even through Google. The Lord will tell you. And God wants to bless us with having us walk in his way, right? And if we are walking according to the will of the Lord, then it will go well with us. That's what the Bible says. Jesus said, if you, if you love me, you will obey what I command. So how can we know what Jesus commands? Of course, we have the word of God. But what about my life today? If we ask him, he will tell us. Because the word says that. And the Bible also says in the Old Testament, which is as valuable as the New Testament, the Bible tells us, that God says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans not to harm you, but to prosper you and give you hope and a future. So what loving father would have plans for his child? Plans not to harm him, but to prosper him and give him hope and a future. But who won't tell him? No one. That's not love, right? Remember, love is discerning the righteous need, developing the ability to fulfill the righteous need for that other person, and delivering the fulfillment of that righteous need. So let us love one another, for love is from God. And that's how we're led by the Spirit. So when we say, Father, I love you. I'm not just coming to get something from your hand, but I want from your heart. I want to be an extension of your heart on earth as it is in heaven, what are we doing today? What's my assignment? That's my, that's my goal, is to fulfill my assignment on the earth for the Lord, for his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. So for January of 2022, 
want to talk to you a little bit and touch on something and we'll do more next week on New Year, New You. How are people experiencing you in their lives? Now, I personally believe that there's always room for improvement. And I believe that improvement should come from the Word of God. There are lots of theories out there about things. And I do believe that God gives every man, man and woman, every man gifts to be used for his kingdom. But not everyone has surrendered to that yet. Um, there are people who, from other religions, whom God has given gifts, but they have not learned who God is to surrender their lives to him. So my desire is, Father, use me to enlarge your kingdom. I want to plunder the gates of hell that no one else goes there. And the Lord has used me to do great things like that. And I've seen great, great fruit. I've seen harvest, harvest, harvest. And um, that's what uh, my, my book is about, A Walk Between Two Worlds. And I'd love for you to get that. It's a love story. It's a love story of God for, for fallen people. It's a love story of God for misjudged people. And it's a love story of God for me and the fulfillment of his love for me on earth with uh, men who loved me and helped me become the woman that I am today. So I want to challenge you today, get with the Lord and hear from him. If you have a need, say, you know, get with your spouse and have unity in Christ and share my story about how God spoke to my husband and me about a car. And if you have a need, whatever that need is, even if it's, let's say that you're short on money this month. I know lots of folks have spent extra for guests and for Christmas, but let's say that you have you don't have enough for your January 1st. I've been there. And so instead of making a, a bad decision, I said, let's pray, right? Let's pray. And when we prayed and said, Lord, we have, we don't have enough. We have two needs, two equally uh, critical needs. We only have it for one. We need Within 30 minutes, we got a phone call from my mother-in-law who said, I, I'm feeling like you guys need something. And my husband said, yes. And she said, what do you need? And I said, we need $3,000. And she said, oh, I'll send you a check. That's love. Discerning a righteous need. Developing the ability to fulfill it and delivering the fulfillment of that righteous need. Now, we didn't have to ever do that again. Praise the Lord. And I'm not talking about someone who's living off of you or who's refusing to do something. Right? I'm talking about asking the Lord about for yourself. Lord, I have this need can you fulfill it for me today? Because you you are my supply. My job isn't my supply. You do supply through it. My husband isn't my supply. It's you, Lord. But you supply through us for each other. Or if you have other needs, just write that need down and go before the Lord and write down what you hear. And then test the spirits, right? Is this of God, right? I had someone call me this week who's very frustrated about a situation and it's kind of, you know, like this. I need money and I could rob a bank. I mean, he's really not going to rob a bank, right? But these kinds of things go through our heads. Um, Satan will try to give you solutions to your problems, but that is not from God. If it is not led by the Spirit of God, which is love, if you can't say, Jesus, bless this, you know, situation, purchase, decision, then it's not from him. So I just want to tell you, drop down into your spirit, hear from the Spirit of God, and walk by the Spirit, not by the flesh. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know below, and I'll be glad to answer those. And then next time we'll talk about more of how to walk in the Spirit to fulfill the desires of God 
through you for your life and for others around you and not walking by the flesh which brings division and destruction. Because the Bible tells us we have been given the ministry of reconciliation. We've been given the ministry of reconciliation to show the world that God's power is true. That's what the world is looking for. The world wants to know that there is a power of God to change lives. I want to bless you now. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you and give you peace. And may you always sense the Holy Spirit within you and will to do God's will. And as we heard today, like Jesus, who grew, who grew, who grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man, may that be you. God bless you guys. I'll see you soon.